Hi everyone, my name is Bo Sanders and I would like to weigh in on this issue of the millennial generation being burned out. As somebody who worked with youth for 20 years, I was a youth pastor, and now I'm an academic, I think I might be able to lend some helpful insight to a problem that I see and I hear the more I read and listen to this discussion. And so I thought I might be able to contribute something that would help us maybe take the conversation in a little bit different of a direction. If you haven't read the initial article by Anne Helen Peterson in BuzzFeed News, I'll link to that in the notes. I've also been reading some interesting articles by church workers about how do, how do we minister to this generation and by some um, women of color who say, you know, we know what this feels like. And so I've been trying to look at different perspectives on this. I've also listened to a couple podcasts of people, um, whether it be in older generations or different cultures, saying, oh, boo-hoo, oh, these poor privileged kids. Uh, stuff right and so people a lot of people poo poo on this uh, on this millennial uh, generation and being uh, snowflakes and all that stuff but I think that there's an issue that needs to be addressed and it is this so I broke it down into three parts and the first is that in a media culture right an image driven culture that uh, things are not just amplified incrementally, like I might feel 5% more pressure than my, say my father uh, does on certain things, but it is actually exponential. So I was a youth pastor from 1996 all the way to 2016. And so in that 20 years, I watched things change incredibly. I mean, in ways I could barely articulate. And I would talk with other youth workers and say like, are you seeing this too? And uh, now give it, my last six years were in Los Angeles, so it was probably amplified all the more by that, but regardless, uh, in Olympia, Washington, in Saratoga Springs, New York, in Redding, California, and uh, in other people, places that I have uh, traded notes with people, it is across the board, in rural, in suburban, and in urban settings. So this thing is real. And that exponential change cannot be underestimated. So that's element one. Element two is that in a consumer society, people, and this is where critical theory comes in, people are reified. They go from being a person to a thing. And this is where branding comes in, that they're not a person, they're a brand, right? And so that expectation uh, creates a frantic pace and uh, an internal psyche that there is a temperature or a tempo inside that really is exhausting. It, it leads to a fatigue or a jadedness or maybe an apathy or a resignation that is legit. I have felt it myself. And so I think we need to give some credibility to what this generation is telling us. I think we should believe the burnout generation. That's, that's what I'm hoping comes out of this. In the Society of Suspectacle, Gita Borg talks about how it, from our grandparents' generation, so let's say that World War I generation, we have moved systematically as a culture from being primarily concerned about being to having, that's the boomers, to appearing. And in our society, you can watch that trend from social, social media. You can see this change. And so I give a lot of credibility to the fact that in our lifetimes, you, if you're watching this, probably in your lifetime, you have seen things change so greatly that sometimes you barely recognize what you're looking at. And it's where the, the get off my lawn thing comes from. Like, well, in my generation, right? Here, but here's the last thing. And I think this is the one that's so important and, and is, is being left out. We are both formed and informed by our upbringing. And so we are groomed or conditioned or shaped. And, and the tools that we have uh, are those that have been, there's a givenness to it. And so if you had, say, a helicopter parents who are always hovering around ready to fix things or bail you out or keep your schedule or drive you to soccer practice, right, all this stuff, then that, has, that experience has both formed and informed you, and you only have the tools, right, that you've been equipped with. That's, that's what you come to the table with. So when you combine the external expectation of a social media, a media image-driven culture, 
and an internal set of abilities, let's call it, um, it makes sense why the, the world that we live in in the 21st century, uh, why it creates the type of anxiety that it does for people. Now, if you are older than 40, you probably can't understand this because you were not, you did not have uh, this media expectation and this set of conditions when you were formed. And so you, when you got your cell phone or when you created your Facebook account, you already came to the table with a set of uh, abilities and skills uh, that this generation may not have. And so when we call it adulting, people reference adulting, I think it's legitimate and we should believe them when they're telling us how they're feeling instead of saying, oh, grow up, you know, in my generation. I totally get the suspicion that they're being uh, wimps or whatever it is, but I just have to say, as somebody who has watched this change from 96 to 2016, and the introduction of the internet, uh, and social media, and now cell phones, I'm telling you, there is something different going on. And I think we would be wise to give credibility to it and believe them when they tell us that they are burned out. And then we can have a different conversation, which is, wow, okay, well, what do we do about that? Where do we go from here? So uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. I hope that this was helpful. I would love to participate in a bigger conversation. And I just was pretty unsatisfied with the stuff that I was hearing and reading um, to you. Let me know. Thanks.